This is Macro Voices with hedge fund manager Eric Townsend, the free weekly financial podcast targeting professional finance, high net worth individuals, family offices, and other sophisticated investors. Macro Voices is all about the brightest minds in the world of finance and macroeconomics telling it like it is, bullish or bearish, no holds barred. Now, here are your hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Serezna. I want to get into your chart deck, though, because we're going to talk about some specific trades that actually implement these concepts. So let's move on to the chart deck. Listeners, you'll find the download link in your research roundup email. Now, if you don't have a research roundup email in your inbox, that means you're not yet registered at macrovoices.com. So just go to the homepage, macrovoices.com. Click the red button that says looking for the downloads. Patrick, page two in the chart deck is the S&P 500 continuous futures chart. What's going on here other than up, up, up? Well, that's exactly it, right? I just wanted to give our uh, listeners a quick update on what's going on in the markets. Uh, I had some upper targets measuring out to about this uh, 4550 to 4600. So we're slowly approaching what I would call the upper boundary of the short-term targets. That doesn't in, in, in itself guarantee that there's some sort of big scary correction. Every time we seem to have these corrections, they last about two, three days, pull back you know, a, a couple percent, find support on some moving averages and they just become buy on dip opportunities. And uh, I don't know if there's any immediate catalyst other than more volume coming back into the markets. One way or another, it'll be a really interesting uh, tell what will happen come post Labor Day because that's really, again, when the volume comes back in and it'll be interesting to see how traders commit to new trends and whether that will be a transition point for that. Nonetheless, uh, on uh, page three, though, I I have the crude oil chart, and I really wanted to kind of highlight that real breakout we got today and also also get your take on this as well. Like one of the things that we were talking about back in August was I just thought there was room for a very robust rally to happen from November to July to have a correction, and that's exactly what we got. We got that, you know, pullback from 75 to down towards $60 to where there was substantial support through March. March and May. But the, what was uh, really surprising to me is just the magnitude of the snapback rally after that correction. It just uh, started with huge velocity and it seems to continue. And uh, it really does feel like uh, the bulls are going to give this a shot to the upside. What I think uh, really I'm using as a pivot is whether or not the bulls can hold 70. I mean, it, it really below $70, we'd have to always still entertain the idea that there could be another squiggle to retest that August low, but uh, the 70 breakout uh, might set things in motion. What are you watching on this chart? Well, I think we're at a critical resistance level right now. As you can see, there's kind of a channel that was forming, a a downsloping channel, and we're right at the top of the channel, right on the line, about to break out of it. It's not on this chart, but the continuation 55-day moving average as well as the 200-month moving average are also right there where that where the market is right now, around 70 spot 50. And just above it, it's 70 spot 88. We've got the 13-week moving average. If we can get past that, that's kind of the last of the resistance that I see. And I think it's clear sailing from there back up to the, the previous high and then from there up into the 80s. It could be that we're about to see a reversal to the downside here. We are right at the critical resistance, just like I said on gold. But I've got a feeling that this has already shaken itself out. There's really no fundamental driver for negative prices here other than August didn't go down the way everybody thought it was going to go down. The other side of it, which is the worsening COVID situation, yeah, that's true. But I think that we're going to run the economy through the worsening COVID situation. There's still going to be demand. So uh, I think that we're probably seeing the beginning of the recovery. You're right. There could be one more, you know, wave down, we could get a, a, a test of 59 just to, you know, break through that round number support at 60 to see what happens. But I'll be surprised if we even get that. I think it's probably the worst is behind us. All right. Well, I wanted to jump on page four to actually one of the uh, energy markets that is running pretty hot, and that's the natural gas market. And uh, we really have seen a breakout, and it is uh, very reminiscent of uh, 2018 when there was the last little kind of mini melt up in that gas prices. Didn't sustain that much, but really uh, seems to be accelerating to the upside. It feels almost a little bit like a lumber chart on there. I'm, I'm curious whether or not that gas is going to be able to clear 
near the five dollar level on the upside but clearly this is a, a a hot market now and it'll be really interesting to see uh, whether or not bulls can follow through on this let's move on to page five patrick and take a look at uranium what's happening here well, it's interesting because uh, that uranium participation fund, there was a lot of hype when it got converted into the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. And uh, what's interesting is that after all the hype, it spent a, a couple weeks backfilling and, and correcting downward, stuck in a range. But uh, uranium suddenly has woken up this uh, this past week and, uh, and a pretty legitimate breakout attempt on the upside, breaking out of what was basically almost a six-month sideways range. And so it'll be really interesting to see whether or not uranium has just started a brand new bull run on the upside. I always say one day doesn't make a new trend. And I don't want to already be like touting that this is going to autopilot to $20, but it is interesting that the range is broken out to the upside. And it'll be interesting to see whether or not the bulls dig in and really start to establish a, a sustaining trend on the upside and really set in motion a lot of those uranium stocks, which have corrected quite a bit over the last, uh, over the summer months. Patrick, from what I'm reading, a lot of this demand is because of the Sprott Uranium Trust. Sprott's marketing is is bringing a lot of interest uh, into it. Let's move on, though, to the main subject of today's postgame segment, which is long volatility option strategies. You heard Wayne in the feature interview allude to a lot of these concepts. Let's get into the nitty gritty of how this works. Right. You know, uh, I kind of, uh, I found it really interesting the way he kind of tried to differentiate him with himself from not only other long vol funds, but other uh, other strategies in general and just like how he manages his long volatility fund. But, uh, you know, to me, one has to put into context, though, that uh, when you're, in, you start a fund to be long volatility or short volatility through an income writing or something like that, you basically have a mandate to, to invest that way. And you're always looking for or ways to be, in the case of uh, Wayne's situation, long tail risk and long uh, volatility and profit from that. My philosophy is slightly more dynamic because uh, because we're not a fund, uh, you don't always have to be long volatility or short volatility. There's strategic and tactical times to deploy the strategies. So I kind of uh, step back and look at the markets through cycles of, and the idea that there's periods of stability and periods of instability. You know, on, on page seven, I have that chart of the weekly chart of the S&P 500, and you kind of keep talking about this Austrian melt-up boom. But when I see this chart, I think we've been in the midst of it for a, quite a while. It, like, it really looks like we've uh, started to run quite parabolic on this market. And uh, the way I kind of look at the market where we are today is uh, to use uh, and to use kind of describe that period of stability versus instability. I like to use the, the analogy to visualize a, like a Jenga tower, like that game. And the, the game starts from a stable structure. And as the game progresses, the tower gets taller, but the base becomes more unstable and inevitably the tower falls. And so when applied to the markets, you go through this period of stability where the market is is either consolidating for long periods of time or has just ended a market correction. And then it proceeds to run into a bull market phase. And as it's rising higher and higher, it becomes more and more unstable, inevitably until a market correction resets the market back to a stable state. And so I, I kind of look at this today where we're at, and we are now exactly one year. It was September 2nd, 2020. A uh, year ago to the day that uh, we had our last 10% market correction, and we are 530 days in a rally off the COVID lows back in March 2020, where the market is up uh, over 100% off of the lows from that time period. And uh, inevitably, the market rally is going to be checked. And this is not about calling for a new bear market or some devastating market crash, but markets work in cycles. And inevitably, this leg of the rally is getting long in the tooth. As an example, Eric, uh, if you go back to using like a the 2009 period at the end of the financial crisis, there were two 
two 20% market corrections that followed in the year 2010 and 2011, even though we were in the midst of a, a, a new bull market. And so uh, I think that at some stage here, we're going to end up seeing some sort of uh, a market correction that is going to check this rally. And so it, it makes it really interesting to use one of these long volatility strategies to kind of reduce the overall volatility in your portfolio. But the, the interesting part about Wayne's interview is when you're long volatility and you're buying, let's say, strategies that are going to give you huge payoffs on the tail, one of the interesting elements is, is that, well, what if this is just a 20% correction, but not a devastating market crash? What if it's um, like when, when you're building a strategy such as a back spread, let's say put back spread, uh, your real payoff is on that, you know, a two to four standard deviation move to the downside, where the market is really blowing out almost like the crash uh, during the COVID, that really those, that kind of a strategy pays off. But like Wayne was suggesting, there are, there are situations with strategies like that where, you know, if the stock market only ends up being down 10%, you might actually be not only down on the market, on your positions, but you might actually even be down on your long vol strategy. And it didn't actually provide a hedge because it wasn't a deep enough of a market drop. So I wanted to kind of put some context into the different ways of being long volatility and what what investors or our listeners can consider when kind of trying to hedge out some of these different risks. Patrick, you mentioned the backspread strategy. Let's take a look on page eight at how that works. Right. And so uh, put back spread is a typical strategy utilized by the selling. So if you recall when Wayne was saying that uh, you some, uh, infuses a short vol in order to pay for buying all of the long vol. And sometimes that can be calendared, that can be done at different strikes. But the, in its simplest form, you are selling, let's say, one at the money put for a very large and juicy put premium, and then using the proceeds to buy many more puts that are farther out of the money with the proceeds. And uh, the idea that you're buying all this long gamma below the lower strike. And so if you notice here on this chart, let's say we were looking at that put spread there on the left there, Eric, what you can see is that your point of actual loss, so let's say the starting point is $50 there, your actual point of greatest loss at expiry is actually at the $45 mark or roughly 10% lower than the market where it is. So in, in other words, you would need almost over a 20% market correction in this example that's illustrated here for that uh, left tail payoff of the long volatility strategy to really start to kick in and make big money. And that's perfectly fine, but usually if you're deploying one of these very low cost carry back spreads, one has to uh, recognize that you're really looking for a big outlier move. And it's going to do a very good job hedging a really big crash if that was what's happening. But if let's say you're you're right now listening to this and you're worried about a 10 to 20 percent market correction odds are that the back spread will disappoint you in terms of your payoff what makes it even worse is the fact that the s p 500 or many beta one kind of securities have a left tail skew in the the vol premiums and therefore as you're going farther out of the money those out of the money puts are being priced at higher and higher implied making you have to widen the spread even farther in order to make even let's say a two to one ratio on the back spread and so the only thing i wanted to highlight here there's nothing wrong with this strategy but it's it may not be the right fit if you're just simply trying to hedge out that kind of 10 to 20 percent market drop Okay, so the back spread, which some people call a ratio spread, really the lesson to, to pay attention to here is it only really works if you have conviction about a really big event happening, a, a really big outlier event happening. What if we don't have that expectation of the big outlier? What strategies can we look at that, that maybe have better characteristics? 
Well, this is where one we can highlight the uh, the long straddle and long strangle strategies that Wayne talked about. Now, what was really interesting about uh, Wayne's approach is, is that through the fact that they are active traders and they're very good at what they do and they're sitting at the machine and, uh, and have some sort of a process from which they are kind of adding and taking away positions to dynamically try to, to create alpha to pay for the fact that they're long a straddle. And that's, uh, that's a great way to approach it, but it's not an easy way for an average investor to uh, to approach it. Ultimately, when you're long a straddle, you're long, obviously, vega or long volatility uh, on both ends, but you're starting pretty much at a, a very neutral stage, and you also need a relatively larger move for these things to start legitimately paying off. But like we've talked about on many past macro voice sessions, this comes at the cost of, of quite a heavy carry. I mean, you're a, a theta burning on both a call and a put, and you have to find some way of actually getting a reasonable payoff in order to, to justify having carried that. And this is where, you know, we're using all sorts of different uh, ideas and strategies for how to deploy this. Uh, one of my favorite is, is a, an actively managed spread, uh, which is something that we have currently going on in our portfolio. And I think it, it's a uh, um, a more tactical way to hedge out the most immediate downside risk of, of a market correction and able to still mitigate some of the carry cost associated with it. And so there are all sorts of really neat strategies and, uh, and I'm looking forward to actually uh, taking our listeners through some of them uh, in a live webinar. And listeners, you can get Patrick's chart decks and webinars every single day with a free trial of Big Picture Trading, which you can find information on at page 10. But Patrick, you mentioned you're doing a specific webinar about these volatility strategies. When is that happening? What do your members have to do in order to get signed up for it? And for people who are not members, will they be able to watch that one with the free trial membership that's available for free at BigPictureTrading.com? Now, you said exactly right, Eric, which is all of my existing members, as well as anyone who signs up for the free trial, can get access to this webinar for free. We're going to be uh, hosting it on Thursday, September the 16th at 4 p.m. Eastern time. But those that can't attend it live, the recording will be made available immediately afterwards and sent to everyone's inboxes. So anyone who wants to see us review the pros and cons of each of these long vol strategies with real simulation and looking at the live markets as to what they are and how I think one can approach adding hedges into their portfolio, then come join us for our trial and, and see what it's all about. And that's on September 16th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. That concludes this edition of Macro Voices. Be sure to tune in each week to hear feature interviews with the brightest minds in finance and macroeconomics. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com, the Internet's premier source of online education for traders. Please visit BigPictureTrading.com for more information. Please register your free account at MacroVoices.com. Once registered, you'll receive our free weekly Research Roundup email containing links to supporting documents from our featured guests and the very best free financial content our volunteer research team could find on the Internet each week. You'll also gain access to our free listener discussion forums and research library. And the more registered users we have, the more we'll be able to recruit high-profile feature interview guests for future programs. So please register your free account today at MacroVoices.com if you haven't already. You can subscribe to Macro Voices on iTunes to have Macro Voices automatically delivered to your mobile device each week free of charge. You can email questions for the program to mailbag at macrovoices.com and we'll answer your questions on the air from time to time in our mailbag segment. Macro Voices is presented for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information presented on Macro Voices should not be construed as investment advice. Always consult a licensed investment professional before making investment decisions. The views and opinions expressed on Macro Voices are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the show's hosts or sponsors. 
Macro Voices, its producers, sponsors, and hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna, shall not be liable for losses resulting from investment decisions based on information or viewpoints presented on Macro Voices. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com and by funding from Fourth Turning Capital Management, LLC. For more information, visit MacroVoices.com.